Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! <laughs> welcome to the Tiberius Show today, and I'm your host, Tiberius Boy! And as always, we're looking at various jobs and how they affect the world around us. Today's guest is going to be very interesting. We are going to talk to an inventor and product developer. Do you have any idea what an inventor does? Well, let's find out. Let me introduce our next guest, the one, the only, the amazing, Stephen Key! You gotta love that intro! Thank you very much. No problem. And thank you for being on the show. Okay, so you were listed as an, inve- as an inventor and licensing expert. For those of my listeners that have no idea, what exactly does that mean? Wow, what does that mean? That means I come up with fun ideas, goofy ideas, ideas that make people smile. And I show those ideas to companies. If they like it, they bring those ideas to market for me so I get to play all day long. That's what I do. Okay. So how'd you get the idea into being an inventor? Well, I didn't want to work for anybody else, and I wanted to have fun, and I wanted to wake up every single day liking what I'm doing. And I wanted to make an impact on other people's lives, and I really wanted to make people smile with some of my ideas. Okay. So when did you know that this was the job for you? Wow, that's a great question. I knew at the minute I made something and I took it to an arts and craft show and people bought it and they loved it and they liked it and they took it home. That's when I knew I was hooked. Okay. And next, yeah. And the next time I was hooked, I came up with an idea. I showed it to a company and they loved it. And next thing I know, it was selling in all the stores and it was on TV it was the Michael Jordan wall ball right over here. Wow. There it is. And people loved it. And I got to uh, see it on TV, and it was wonderful because I love playing basketball. Mm. So if I invent something, should I get licensed or patented? Well, licensing is really a, it's a simple concept. I'm going to license my idea to a company meaning I'm going to rent it to a company. And every time they take my idea and they sell it for me, they pay me a royalty. That's what's called licensing. So it's basically coming up with ideas and showing it to companies. And if they like it, they pay you. Now, yeah, and patenting is really about protecting those ideas. And patenting is one way to protect your inventions. Yeah. Okay. So, how can someone come up with the ideas to invent? Well, people come up with different ideas all the time. What I like to do is find something I really like to do and see if I can make it better. Or maybe if I have a problem and I'm trying to solve that problem, or maybe I just want to have fun. And I'll show you something really quick. You know, guitar picks have a certain shape. They're boring. And I wanted to make guitar picks that were really fun and there's one in the shape of mickey mouse oh wow that's cool so it's really about having fun and seeing things a little bit differently and some of my ideas are really silly here's a silly one here this is an arrow with the suction cup that says i'm stuck on you or i love you <laughs> right over there so some that are silly head, some yeah, are funny um some actually are important but some of them are just fun that's true. Okay, well, now here seems like a good time to take a quick commercial break. Let's hear a word from our sponsors. And we are back here talking with Stephen Key. Stephen is a licensing expert in something called an IP strategist. So, Stephen, what exactly is an IP? And is it like a strategic, like playing strategy board games? Well, IP stands for intellectual property. Mm. And what does that mean? That just means things that you can protect. Intellectual property is your creativity. It could be a song that you wrote. It could be a book that you've written. 
It could be an invention. It could be a painting. Those, all those things that you create are called intellectual property and things that you could potentially own. And a okay. strategy. Okay, that's really interesting. A strategy is just how to protect those, those things that you've created. And I'll give you an example. Here's a, here's a product. Um, it's called the Word Lock. And okay. instead of using uh, numbers, you have letters. So you can spell out certain words to unlock this lock. So the intellectual property would be a patent. And here's another okay. idea here. Can you see that idea? Let me see if I can see it. What does it say on the bottle? Oh, let me see if I can do it here. Maybe it's hard to see. So it's something spinning one. inside of it. Yes. Well, here's another one too. This might be a little easier. Here's a here's a window. If you spin it, you have more. Information. Oh, so you have more information about it. Yeah. Okay, so oh. it's a it's a regular like Coke bottle or Pepsi bottle that has like a little bit of the uh, stuff cut into it. Where if you spin the bottle and hold on to like the plastic part of it, or like the paper, you can go yeah. ahead and see more information about it. That's cool. Yes, it allows you to provide the consumer maybe important information, maybe drug facts or warnings or promotions, or maybe just fun stuff. Okay. So, so intellectual property could be something that has functionality, like the lock. It could be something the way it looks, like the label. It could be uh, a, a done a couple different ways. Yeah, sure, you're not what wrong. What this does. Okay. So what kind of skills do you have to have in order to be able to license these products? That's the great part. You don't need any skills at all. You just need to have fun. Hey, the, the crazy thing about being an inventor is just seeing things differently and coming up with things that maybe you think people might like, right? It's, okay. it's all about having fun. That's the great part about being an inventor. Okay. So no, you don't need any tools. You need it. It's all up here. Okay. So what is the difference between licensing products and getting a patent? Okay, licensing, like I said, that's when you're going to rent or license your idea to a company and they're going to pay you a royalty. And the way you're going to protect that idea is with a patent. Okay. Well, are there any rules about who can get a patent? Like, can a kid be an inventor? Yes, you can. At any age. Okay. So... Do you have to be like rich to license a product or how much are we talking about? Well, no, you don't. In fact, I want to show you a product that a 13 year old boy licensed. Really? Yeah. 13 years old. This sells at K it sells at Knowles, Barnes and Noble, Walmart, and a couple of the stores. And this is called the bookie cushion. Oh, it's, it's a like a bookmark cushion. or something. Yeah. It's a whoopee cushion. It's a bookmark. Fart. And you put it in your book and you close it with farts. Okay, that's actually kind of funny. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, do you like... Okay, so, does it take a long time? I mean, I'm already 12 and I'm not getting any younger, so... No, no, it doesn't take a long time. It does take some work. It takes um, the no... You know, you have to know the steps. But like I said, you could be 12, you could be 82. It doesn't matter. You could live anywhere in the world, but you need to kind of follow these certain steps. And if you do, you can license your ideas to companies and they can take it to market for you. And it's a lot of fun. Okay. So can I license a product without having a patent on it? I designed a cool pencil holder during the pandemic. And I don't think people need masks anymore on their stuff. I think that's a great question. And yes, you can. Most ideas that do get licensed or rented to a company don't have patents. Okay. Yeah. So does it take a lot of training to be a licensing expert? No, it takes experience, but it really takes passion. To be good at anything, you need to love to do it. And you need to do do it repeatedly. And and maybe have a teacher, maybe have a mentor, someone that can help you along the way. But it really starts with wanting to do something. And if you want to do it, you can figure it out. But it's open to anybody. 
And that's what's amazing about this world, about being inventive. And once you realize the power of creating ideas, mm -hmm. you'll be able to solve a lot of problems, everyday problems too. Okay. So let's say if I license saying the word poop on clothing, does that mean no one else can do it? Well, you have to do a little bit more. You might have to put a graphic or maybe showing mm -hmm. someone pooping in a certain style. Or just the word, like an aerial brown lettering. P-O-O-P, -O -O period. Probably not. You might have to change it a little bit. Maybe poopsie or something a little bit okay. different. Yeah. So <laughs> why do you think licensing ideas are a good investment? Well, I think, um, I don't know if it's a good investment. I think it's something that if you're creative, I think it's a very rewarding profession. But like anything else, um, success is not measured by, by money. It's really measured by doing something you truly love to do. Okay. So what's the best part about being a licensing expert? Well, I'm leveraging the power of companies. Those companies are working for me. I can live anywhere in the world. I can do whatever I want during the day. And all those employees of that companies are selling my product. Awesome. So I could be vacationing and they, they, would, they could be selling my product in all the retail stores. So basically, Amazing. those companies are working for me. That's what I love about it. Awesome. So how did you switch from inventing to licensing? Well, it's inventing you could do two ways. I could come up with an idea and I could sell it myself. That's called venturing where I do all the manufacturing. I raise the money, I do all the sales. For licensing, I give it to a company and they do all the work. They do everything. That's the part I like. So they're a little bit different. Okay. So what's the hardest part about doing this type of work? You're going to get rejection. You're going to get rejected. You're going to, you're going to get a lot of no's. I don't like it. It's not right for me. So you begin to realize it's a numbers game. You're going to have to come up with a lot of ideas. And you're going mm -hmm. to have to be kind of tough because you're going to get a lot of people saying no. It's only a 1% chance that someone says yes. If you ask 100 people, only few of them will say yes. A lot of them will say no. The majority will tell you no. Now, when you get better, you build relationships with those companies and they start to tell you what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. that way, that's the that's the way for your success to and get then a you bit start higher. doing more stuff like that okay. yeah. yeah well does it take a lot of a long time to come up with good ideas no once you learn how do you control your creativity and I think everybody's creative you can come up with ideas anytime during the day or night if you know how to harness how to practice and how to exercise that muscle of creativity you can do it anytime you want Okay. What was the craziest thing that has happened while you were doing your passion? Well, I got to meet some amazing people while I'm creating. I got to meet Taylor Swift. I got to do all of her guitar picks. And I got to meet some really fun, creative people, too. So it's a way to connect with other creative people. So I think that's pretty wild. Wow. So if you were a kid again, what would you do differently? I would, um, I would be a little bit more determined and that don't let rejection stop you because sometimes I would come up with a great idea. When I first started, I would show it to a company and they would say no. And I would come up with another idea. I didn't mm. realize that to keep on pitching ideas, you got to keep on showing those ideas over and over again. And that's what I learned a little bit later. Okay. So how does being a licensing expert make the world a better place? Oh, well, let me show you something else. Back here, mm -hmm. this, this idea was licensed to a company. Okay. Packaging innovation and eliminates plastic rings. And those plastic Ooh. rings are terrible for the environment. They're terrible for animals. So this invention 
I'm teamed up with some other inventors. We've come together and we licensed it or rented it to a company. And now there's a new package to save animals. Wow. So you can have a big impact. Yes. Okay. So what is the first step that every person that wants to get into inventing and licensing should do? The first thing they should do, I think, is to read a little bit about it or watch some videos or watch this interview. You need to start somewhere. Find someone that's already find someone that's already doing it and follow what they're doing. Learn from them. Educate yourself. Okay. Well, what is that one project that you licensed that you will never forget? Well, I guess it was my first big idea, which was on TV, and it was selling in all the Walmarts, and that was my rotating label that I showed you with the window here. Mm-hmm. Cool. And this went around the world, and we sold hundreds of millions of rotating labels. Wow. So, yeah, yeah I think that was the what I was most excited about, yes. Okay. So, who can you say was the person that helped drive your passion the most? Well... Um, I had a mentor early in my career. His name was Steve Askin. When everybody thought I was crazy, he thought, he said, Steve, keep on doing it. Keep on being creative. Things will happen your way, but stay with it. And he's still a friend of mine today, over 40 years. He's still a good friend of wow. mine. So what advice would you give to my listeners if they wanted to grow up and be a licensing expert or inventor? I would say learn as much as you can. There's some really good books. There's some YouTube channels that you can watch. But learn to be creative and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Okay. Well, what was the best advice that you've ever received and who gave you that advice? Well, my father told me something early on. He said, Steve, if you find something you truly love, you'll never work a day in your life. What an amazing message. Well, That's a great message, right. truly. He, he was right. And he was a very um, insightful person to tell me that, to, to really work hard and find that thing and trust your instincts. And um, uh, I truly love what I do, and I cannot thank him enough. Mm -hmm. Well, what was the very first job that you've ever had? I picked apricots when I was 13 years old and I didn't like it very much, but it was a good experience. Well, <laughs> was there anything to learn from that job that helped you be a better licensing expert? Um, the, no, I, I realized um, some of those jobs that aren't very fun are really good jobs. They teach you a lot about yourself. And sometimes you just have to take those jobs and learn a little bit and never be defined by the job you've taken. Just learn as much as you can and look for the next job. Well, me, I'm allergic to manual labor, so <laughs> I wouldn't want to pick at apricots either. <laughs> it uh, wasn't so, it wasn't fun, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. Well, what message do you want to tell children all over the world about doing the work that you do? I want to tell everyone that um, if you want to share your creativity, creativity with the world, you can. There's ways that I have discovered that anyone, doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter where you live, if you want to be in the world of creativity, you can. And I'd love to break down the barriers to show everyone that you can do it. Mm-hmm. Well, on that note, let's take a quick break to pay some bills. The Tiberia Show would like to thank one of their dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom braille ADA signs, vinyl lettering to trophies and awards. The cool part about Custom Designs is they can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373 and tell them that Tiberius sent you. And we are back with licensing expert Stephen Key. 
Well, Steven, my dad said that you won a whole lot of awards for the work that you do. What is the one award that you're most proud of and why? Well, thank you for mentioning that. I think my favorite award was in New York City, and I won that evening two Edison Awards. And that night, along with Ford, Nike, and Apple, I won two awards. And I think that was a magical a magical night for me. Wow. What is that award about? Well, that <laughs> award was about being innovative. And what did I do that would stand out among the industry? And that was my rotating label I showed you. Mm -hmm. That was such a simple idea that delivered more space and that space could be used for a lot of different applications. So it was just that I created a functional package that was impacting people's lives. So that award was okay. about innovation. So I see that you've written a lot of books. Which book do you think a kid in school should read to prepare him or her to get into your business? Well, my favorite book is called One Simple Idea, and it's been translated in five different languages. And it's even used as a textbook in some colleges, but it's called One Simple Idea, and it tells a very simple story, and it's very easy to read for anyone that wants to know more about licensing ideas. Okay. So, you have been on Dr. Phil and lots of other TV shows. Which is the most fun to be on? Well, Dr. Phil, that was lots of fun. I was a guest uh, on his show, a guest expert. I think the one I enjoyed the most was a show called uh, The Big Idea with Donnie Deutsch. And that was in New York. And that's when I was showing my fun guitar picks. Mm. And uh, that was a lot of fun. And very it was very nerve-wracking, too, to be on TV. But I enjoyed it. And uh, it was a great show. Mm -hmm. Well, my dad said that your articles have been published all over the place, including Time Magazine and Forbes. How did you get such large magazines to take a look at your work? I, well, here, well, <laughs> I've got a story to tell, but I'm going to tell that in just a minute. Um, I like to write. And I'm not very good at it, but I still like to write. And I want to share that knowledge with other people. So I've written a thousand articles. That's a million words uh, over the course of the last 10 years. So, Whoa. Oh, Are you saying a million words? A million words. Um, I can't even write that in a document. Jeez. Uh, well, <laughs> I, you know, so, so why does it work? I like to share knowledge with other people. Okay. Well, if you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? I would say live in the present. Don't, so, don't work so hard for the future. Live for today. Enjoy every day. I think it's important. Sometimes we work so hard for things in the future, we forget about um, all the little things during the day that are important. Okay, so what was the biggest mistake you ever made and how did it change you as a person? The biggest mistake I've ever made, I've made a lot of mistakes. I make mistakes every day, even today. But I say the biggest mistake, um, I don't know if I've made a, the biggest mistake. I think I've made so many mistakes. I, I think they're all stepping stones to success. The one thing I have learned, don't take yourself so serious. Find a sense of humor in everything you do. Okay. So, when you're not working, what do you do for fun? I like to travel and I like to garden. I like to take care of my yard, my plants, and watch them grow. Okay. And I like to travel the world because it teaches me that we're all alike no matter where we live and we all basically have the same dreams. Okay, so do you play video games? And if you do, what's your favorite one? I do not play video games. Why not? Why not? The only video game I used to play would probably be Pong, and that's one of the first video games ever. And you don't even remember that. It's been around for that long. 
Oh, I remember. Probably, yeah. Home was probably the first one. And that was um, from Atari. And uh, Nolan Bushnell created that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So what's your favorite book to read? Wow. I think The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. And it teaches you that okay. every problem you have is an opportunity for greatness. Every opportunity, every problem you have is really an opportunity for you to solve it. And it's an opportunity for you to learn, to do a better job, and it's an opportunity for greatness. I love that book. Okay. 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 Now, can you tell me that one story? You don't remember. This is a kid's show. But that one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Come on. You can tell me. I would. I have a secret. Can I tell you a secret? Sure. Okay. I am. I told you that I write books. And I've written a thousand articles, but I'm not a writer. That I have a learning disability, and it's hard for me to write. So I write. Um, I speak into my phone, and my phone writes it oh. for me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's an obstacle. I have a hearing de defect. Yeah. I have a hard time hearing certain letters. But I found a way to overcome the obstacle by talking into my phone. My phone records it, and someone sees it and edits it for me so I can write. Okay. I used, to be, I used to be very embarrassed about that. But now I've learned that when one door closes, another door opens. And so it, it created, it gave me an opportunity to love to express myself, but I have to do it a different way. Okay, cool. So is there anything I should think my listeners should know about you? Uh, no, I think they should know that I love what I do. I love Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I love to create all the time. And I think you never stop Here's the, here's the magic. If you never want to grow old, learn how to create. Okay. So, do you mind giving your Facebook or website for my listeners to follow you? Yeah, I think the best way to, is to go to my YouTube channel called Invent Right, R-I-G-H-T. You want to invent right, not wrong. Invent Right TV on YouTube, and you can watch all the videos that explain how to license ideas and you'll have a blast. There's over 1,000 videos. Whoa. Cool. So what's that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? Um, one question you forget to ask me? I don't know. You've asked some really good questions. I don't know if you've, you've forgotten any. Um, bup, 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 bup. No. I think you've done a great job. Okay, well, thank you, Stephen, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? Absolutely. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Over 40 years, Lighthouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties. Contact White House, Southern Florida at 407-898-2483 or visit them online at lighthousecfl.org. Whoa, that's a fast... And now it's time for the Video Game of the Week. And now it's time for Math Corners. Thank you, Stephen, for helping me with Math Corners. This week, we're going to do some more multi-step word problems. My dad is always good at finding new problems for me to solve. Today, we're going to talk about ordering shoes. So, Monica owns a shoe store in Los Angeles. Whenever she orders a new style of shoe, she orders seven pairs of that style in most of the popular sizes. The most popular sizes are 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. That's five. Now, she also orders three pairs in size five and three pairs in size 11. So one down and one up. So this week, there are two new styles of shoes. 
How many pairs of shoes will Monica order? <gasps> Pretty good question, right? <laughs> well, first is a rural problem because we do know that people do run shoe shores and have to order shoes that people will buy. So, to solve this issue, you have to first find out how many of each size you would order. So, there are five sizes, 6 through 10, that are most popular, and there's two that are not. So, 5 times 7 pairs is 35, and 2 times 3 pairs is 6. Now, you add the 6 to 35, and you get 41 pairs of each style of new shoe. But wait, there's more! So this week, there are two new styles of shoe. So, at the times of 41 by 2, and then get 82 pairs of shoes that she has to order. And that's... 164 shoes by themselves? Jeez, that's way too many shoes. So, Steven, do you ever buy the latest styles when it comes to shoes? No. Neither do I. So, my teacher said that I would use math every day. How do you use math and licensing? Well, how many stores could sell my create creative ideas? So, I love doing I got math. an answer. I got an answer yeah. for that. What is it? A lot. <laughs> well, it's important to know math. It's very important. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Stephen, for your help with Math Corners. Well, thank you so much. And now it's time for the Heart of a Lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the Heart of a Lion which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. This week, we're going to talk about nobility. For me, I think nobility is remembering we are God's social possessions and acting in a noble way, showing courage and honor. The qualities of nobility are goodness, virtue, honor, generosity, and selflessness. So this week, my dad noticed nobility in something I did. I was at the park, and a little kid had fallen and was crying. I stopped playing with some older kids to help calm her down. I did not see her parents anywhere, so I just distracted her and played with her for a little bit. She liked playing with me, so I ended up playing around with her for almost an hour. I had completely ignored the older kids that were way more fun. And, well, my dad said that that was selfless and that I showed empathy and gave the little girl my time, even though I would have more fun with the older kids. So, Steven, did you see her use nobility at all this week? Well, I think it's very important to give of yourself. And I really like that you've told that story because I think it is important. And, then, and I don't think we can give enough. So I'm a big believer in helping people that need a little help because I think we all do. So thank you for sharing that story. No problem. Well, of all the Heart of a Lion virtues, which is the one that you saw the most? Well, I think leadership is a big one. And I think you're showing how you need to lead and you need to educate and you need to open people's minds for new opportunities. And I cannot thank you enough for letting me share what I do because you're helping other people see other doors of opportunity. So it's leadership. No problem. And we should always try to be lion strong in everything we do. And that's our show folks. I wanna thank the one, the only, the amazing Stephen Key for being on my show. It has been so much in talking to you today. I think we learned a lot about licensing products and the joys of being an inventor. Thank you so much for having me. I had a blast, so thank you. No problem. And do you mind giving your website again? Well, two places. You can go to inventrighttv. Or go to inventright.com, and we have a lot of free stuff, which you're going to absolutely love. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at the type of your show. And I would like to thank WWPR 1490 AM, KINT 98, Soul Radio 24-7, and Easy Way TV, and all the other stations that air on my show. And please be sure to visit the type of your show on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. Steven, have you subscribed yet? No, but I'm going to now. Proud of you. Oh, and leave a comment and tell me how I'm doing. Also, be sure to listen to us next week on the Type of You Show with your host, Tabiri. Yes, boy! <laughs>